In this video, we're going to be going over an example related to 3D equilibrium, combining what we learned about free body diagrams and 3D systems and equations of equilibrium. I'll let you pause the video so you can read over the question and attempt the question on your own if you want. So, in the question we have a rectangular plate supported by two hinges, A and B, as well as a cable connected at C and D. We're told to find the force in the cable C, D, and the reaction forces at hinges A and B. The question also tells us to assume that the hinge at B does not exert any axial thrust. What this means is we have to assume any force that runs along the x-axis at point B is equal to zero. We'll first assume positive is in these directions. The first step we need to do is draw our reaction forces and given loadings on the free body diagram. At hinge A, we would have reaction forces in both the x, y, and z direction. At hinge B, we would only have the reaction forces in the y and z direction, because since we're told hinge B doesn't exert any axial thrust, then there won't be any reaction force in the x direction. We can also note that there will be no moment reaction forces at any of the hinges. We explained why in the free body diagrams video. There's also the tension in the cable between points C and D, which we can call TCD. And finally, we have the weight of the plate acting downwards. The second step, we can write out the position coordinates for points D and C. Point D is located 960 millimeters in the positive x direction, 675 millimeters in the positive y direction, and lies 0 millimeters on the z direction. Point C lies 690 millimeters in the positive x direction, 0 in the y direction, and 450 millimeters in the positive z direction. The third step, we need to find how many unknowns we have in the problem and figure out if we can use the equations of equilibrium. We have three unknowns at hinge A, two unknowns at hinge B, and one unknown in cable CD. That gives us six unknowns, which means we can apply the six equations of equilibrium. Now in the fourth step, we want to choose an equilibrium equation that gets rid of as many unknowns as possible. This happens to be the summation of moments about the x-axis, since most of the forces pass through the x-axis. Before we write out the equation, we're going to split up the cable force into its x, y, and z components to make it easier for us. Note that the weight of the plate is equal to mass, which is 100 kilograms, times gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. Now we can set up our summation of moments about the x-axis equation. We can see that all the forces in the hinges will not create a moment about the x-axis because the hinges lie on the x-axis. Also, Tx and Tz will have no contribution to the moment because they lie on the xz plane and will pass through the x-axis, making it equal to zero. So we're left with W and Ty. W will create a positive moment with a distance of 450 millimeters divided by 2 away from the x-axis, and Ty will create a negative moment with a distance of 450 millimeters away from the x-axis. Simplifying, we get Ty equals to 490.5 newtons. In the fifth step, we need to find the magnitude of the position vector CD. Remember, position CD can be found using this equation. And to find the magnitude, we just square each component, add them together, and square root the whole thing. We can take the location coordinates for points C and D that we found in step two, and sub them in, and we get the magnitude of position vector CD to be equal to 855 millimeters. On to step six where we can use steps five and two to find the direction cosines. We can set up the direction cosine equations and then plug our corresponding position coordinates in. And we'll end up with these values. 
Then we can use the direction cosines of vector force CD to find the force components of the cable as well as the force in the cable. These are the equations to find the forces. We can start with the second equation here because we already found TY, so we're left with one unknown. So after subbing the values in, we get TCD, the force in cable CD, is equal to 621.7 newtons. Now that we have found force CD, we can plug it into the other direction cosine equations and find TX and TZ. After simplifying, we get TX equals to 196.5 newtons and TZ equals to negative 327 newtons. Now that we know the force of the cable and its X, Y, and Z components, we can move ahead to step 7, where we can find the reaction forces that hinges A and B. We'll start off by using the equation of equilibrium in the x direction. Since there are only two forces, Rax and Tx, we end up with Rax equals to 196.5 newtons. Then in our next equilibrium equation, we'll take moment about the y-axis at hinge B, and we'll find the forces Raz, Tx, and Tz contribute to that moment. So we'll end up with Raz equals to negative 37.9 newtons. Then we can use the equations of equilibrium in the z direction and we'll end up with RBZ equals to 364.9 newtons. Then we can take moment about the z direction at hinge A and we'll get this equation. Simplifying we get that RBY is equal to 113.2 newtons. For our final equation of equilibrium we can take the summation of forces in the y direction. Simplifying, we get that RAY is equal to 377.3 newtons. Therefore, to summarize our final answer, these are our reaction forces at hinge A, these are the reaction forces at hinge B, and the force in the cable is this. That concludes the example for 3D equilibrium. In the next video, we'll be starting a new section and we'll be going over the shear formula.